Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz, and today Tasmania and Victoria once again in the news for being battered by severe weather overnight. We're going to be recapping on the severe storms that have lashed Tasmania over the last couple of days. We'll be talking about some rainfall up in far north Queensland, the heat wave extending across central Australia, and some thunderstorms across southern Australia. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Your support is greatly appreciated. So just taking a look at the cold fronts that have blown through Tasmania overnight. I mean, you can see this one over here now extending into the Tasmania and see very strong indeed still in its path bringing winds of 110 kilometers an hour up at Hogan Island in the Bass Strait winds that uh, almost at 100 kilometers an hour down at Matt Syker Island which yesterday recorded a peak wind gust of 154 kilometers an hour an insane wind gust and the strongest wind gust Australia has received in nearly two years very strong indeed and some more strong wind gusts and winds are expected to continue throughout the course of today as this icy shower pool brings up sweeping up from the south and bringing showers and storms to Tasmania into the later hours of this afternoon. We'll break down the forecast for you right now. Here's a look at what things are ha or how things are happening across central Tasmania at this time. You can see showers continuing and adding to the flooding problem that Tasmania is currently experiencing. Major flooding in the Derwent River at this time and that's expected to continue over the next 24 hours before it slowly eases off tomorrow. Showers and storms and snow will continue across central Tasmania. They'll confine themselves to the west coast later on this afternoon and then become snow showers in the high peaks along the west coast later on this evening and into early tomorrow morning as a high pressure ridge builds in this system's wake. This will bring cool nights tomorrow morning a very early, uh, a very frosty start to Victoria and New South Wales early tomorrow morning with icy winds sweeping up from the southeast across the high peaks in Victoria and New South Wales and some strong winds as well still sweeping into Tasmania's west coast and some of the high peaks early tomorrow morning. They will keep temperatures slightly more mild across Tasmania and a few snow showers here and there will also keep temperatures closer to zero. I'm not expecting anything absolutely awfully freezing across Tasmania but it will be a cool start across Victoria and New South Wales as a result of this high pressure system. Showers will continue through Tuesday before another cold front takes place on Wednesday night for Tasmania. The showers will ease off by Tuesday morning and then uh, pipe up again Wednesday night. So a good 36 hours without showery conditions. Certainly welcome weather for Tasmania. Now this cold front's not going to be anywhere near as strong as some of the systems that we have seen over the past week. It will still bring damaging winds to the west coast of Tasmania and some of the high peaks, especially around Cradle uh, Mountain and Lake St. Clair. There will be some damaging wind gusts through there and some heavy falls are also possible with rainfall accumulations up to 50 millimetres between th uh, Wednesday evening through to about Friday morning. The showers and snow will ease out Friday evening. Still a few showers expected through Friday and Saturday and also went towards Sunday as well as some more cold fronts sweep up and the rainfall will continue to pile on throughout the course of next week where up to 150 millimetres is possible between Wednesday the 4th of September and Wednesday the 11th of September. Again the mo majority of that will be falling Wednesday night and Thursday morning from that cold front and then on Saturday and Sunday with another couple of cold fronts expected to move through but the key points to take away from these weather systems is in terms of the wind threat and also the rain threat to a degree they are going to be nowhere near as severe as the systems that we have seen blow through and you can see on the rainfall accumulation map here there is still quite a substantial amount of rainfall expected in that week-long period but the majority of that will be uh, falling towards the bulk of those cold fronts which will happen Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Still some good rainfall is expected. There is going to be some good rainfall as well throughout the course of the remainder of today and some damaging winds are also possible from these cold fronts that will be moving through but once again I'm refusing to show the first uh, well, the first 48 hours of the forecast because the wind gusts still remain very high over that initial place in the forecast. You can see it here over the next 48 hours some very strong wind gusts are still expected to persist across Tasmania and parts of Bass as well with destructive wind gusts extending up to the Victorian coastline as high as 125 kilometers an hour and as high as 130 kilometers an hour in severe weather warned areas across the Victorian high peaks and into the New South Wales high peaks as well. Tasmania those winds are just starting to ease off now they're going to remain strong over the Furneaux Islands for the coming uh, couple of hours and they'll also remain strong across the south uh, west of the state as well around Low Rocky Point and down towards Matt Syker Island but they are now starting to calm off across central Tasmania which is good Good news indeed because they are fed up with the winds that's for sure. This is the last day of ongoing persistent severe weather for Tasmania for quite a while. Uh, it certainly looks like this was a way to send out winter that's for sure. Certainly some great snowfall accumulations as well over the high peaks in Tasmania. Uh, very high snowfall accumulations like I said up to a meter was reported and about half of that has settled across some of those high peaks and a little bit more into the valleys. Blizzards were reported in Victoria New South Wales. Destructive wind gusts extended throughout Victoria. Uh, 
there was apparently a fatality in Sydney as well as a result of the destructive wind gusts knocking down a tree or in remote New South Wales. I can't remember where it was, where I read it in the news, but you can see that these weather systems have been deadly. Very significant weather systems to blow through Tasmania, Victoria, New South Wales. Certainly the strongest winter systems that they have received in probably a decade. Very significant winter storms. That is all that I can say with this system. We'll just touch on the temperatures as well across Victoria and New South Wales. Later today and into tonight, they will get quite cold, especially into the mountainous areas. It will go down towards sort of minus four, minus, minus five into some of the high peaks of uh, New South Wales around Threadbow and the Kosciuszko sort of area. And they will get quite close to zero across some of the more hilly areas in central Victoria. Melbourne expecting a cool night, but not too cold of around seven or eight degrees. It'll be down towards zero across central parts of Victoria and below zero across central parts of Tasmania. Pretty cold indeed, but those winds sweeping up uh, the warmer air around the coastal areas will keep things slightly warmer across parts of the coastal regions in Victoria and throughout Tasmania. The cool conditions, however, swiping up as far north as northern New South Wales, and that will give a short-term reprieve to the heat that's being experienced across southeastern Queensland and northeastern New South Wales, where it has been blisteringly hot there lately, very hot for this time of the year. And speaking of this hot weather, it's now time that we talk about Central Australia with the hot weather that's currently developing across central parts of the nation. Right now it's confined mostly to the northern parts, however it's getting quite warm in Western Australia. In fact, today expecting a maximum of 26 degrees in Perth. Very warm indeed. I'm very excited to wear shorts for the first time of the uh, of this part of the year. Very excited indeed. Quite warm across northern parts of the nation as well. It's going to continue warming up as well. It looks like uh, winter is finally saying goodbye across parts of the southern parts of the nation. And definitely into the central parts of the nation as well. Wednesday will be warmer still across parts of Western Australia. It looks like 40 degree days are now cemented across the northern parts of Western Australia. Typical for this time of the year, but it is still an early onset for this uh, warm temperatures. Warm across South Australia on Thursday, warm again on Friday as a cold front moves through. And this leads us into the next part of the video, which we'll get to in just a few minutes. There's gonna be some thunderstorms developing across Western and Southern Australia. Warm conditions ahead of this cold front for, uh, for New South Wales on Friday, where it will go into the mid 30s the parts of the uh, western part of the state. It'll be also quite warm up into the high 20s and low 30s across parts of the east coast around Sydney, even down towards Bega, expecting a blisteringly warm 28 degrees. It'll be one of the warmest starts to the summer season, so that's for sure if those temperatures do materialise. Slightly cooler on Saturday, in fact, significantly cooler across the eastern parts of the state as that cold front moves through, and it looks like the temperatures warm up really quickly from Sunday and Monday, going into the mid 30s once again to start off next week and warm once again through Tuesday. Wednesday through parts of Queensland and Central Australia. In fact, it looks like Wednesday might be slightly cooler. Just this little speckle of uh, cooler temperatures mixed into things later on Wednesday afternoon tells me that thunderstorms are going to be firing up. With this cold front through here, it looks like thunderstorms are actually going to be a pretty consistent thing on the forecast over the next couple of months or so. If you watched yesterday's video, I'm expecting an early onset in terms of thunderstorms, much above average thunderstorm numbers across Central Australia and especially into the east as well this wet season. And it looks like it's already coming to fruition on the forecast models, which is just fantastic to see. We're just going to pull this rainfall forecast back to Thursday and Friday. You can see a cold front expected to sweep up from the south and impact Western Australia. Well, this one here is actually expected to create a bit of a thunderstorm event across Central Australia. As this cold front builds here, we could be seeing some light rainfall and mixed in thunderstorms as well with a pretty good environment for thunderstorms in terms of um, available conditions such as humidity and also winter in the upper atmosphere, we could be seeing a pretty conducive environment for some thunderstorms to fire up across parts of central Western Australia into the south interior around Lanista and Warburton. Some thunderstorms also possible through central South Australia around midday on Saturday around sort of Maralinga and Coobapedi. We could also be seeing some thunderstorms as far as far south as Sejuna and Roxby Downs around the Lake Eyre sort of area. This cold front will then sweep through quite rapidly and you can see uh, showers and storms expected to move into uh, parts of New New South Wales on Sunday afternoon and then into Monday. Again, nothing too crazy, nothing too heavy is expected there. In terms of rainfall accumulations this coming weekend, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, you can see some peak rainfall accumulations expected to be hovering between sort of that 20 to 40 millimetre threshold. There will be uh, places that pick up more than this and there'll be places that pick up substantially less. We're talking about thunderstorms and we're talking about semi-tropical rainfall here. So this is very, very hard to predict and things that can and will change on this forecast here. 
here. And you can see it's not overly consistent between other forecast models as well. The GFS is nothing to talk about here. And the Axis G3 just has a few light showers expected on the forecast, whereas the Eastern Relief is going ham with these showers and storms here across parts of Central Australia. It's that time of the year when we start to see showers and storms pipe up across Central Australia. So again, I am confident that this will come to fruition at least one way uh, in terms of thunderstorm events, but I'm not overly confident. I'm certainly not betting the farm on 50 millimeters falling across central parts of South Australia. But for grey nomads and travelers through central parts of Australia, just keep this in mind. You might want to head a little bit further north into Queensland or the Northern Territory or even into Western Australia as well. There's some beautiful spots out there. Western Australia is going to experience its best wildflower season in a long time. So I'd recommend getting over there. That's for sure. I wish I could take some time off and get myself out there as well. That'd be fantastic to see. Uh, but it does look like we're seeing some pretty good rainfall now on the forecast of central parts of Australia. Just before we go full-blown tropical and talk about storms over the north and into the east, we'll just touch on Western Australia. There is some stuff coming through this week, Thursday especially. In fact, it's going to be quite cool with a cold front moving through this Wednesday uh, and this will bring some cool conditions in its wake with a bit of a polar blast expected in this cold front's wake with some storms and showers are possible right, uh, right throughout Thursday and where temperatures are not expected to rise above 14 degrees Celsius across some of the eastern suburbs in Perth on Thursday morning. So it's going to be very cold indeed uh, to start off Thursday and very cold indeed right throughout Thursday where we're going to be seeing up to 25 millimetres of rainfall as well. So some good rainfall is going to be coming through from Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Uh, it's just going to be slow moving, uh, moving showery stuff that's going to be sweeping up from the south. I'm not expecting too much in the way of strong winds. They will be confined to the coast if they do materialise. Storms as well are possible, especially along the south coastal region. And some small hailstones as well are possible across parts of the south coast and low west region but I wouldn't be betting the house in terms of much hailstones being reported and certainly not being too widespread either. It'll be really cold Thursday night into Friday morning as these high pressure ridges build here and in the wake of this system some clear cool calm conditions are expected but yeah right throughout Thursday it's going to be really cold across parts of the southwest certainly going to be the coldest day for quite a few uh, months that's for sure. We could be seeing temperatures struggle to rise out of the single digits of parts of the southwest by Thursday afternoon so very very cool indeed and that's in stark contrast to conditions out in the south interior and parts of South Australia where our temperatures will be soaring four times as high up to 38 or 39 degrees Celsius there. Very, very warm indeed out there. And now let's talk about the tropics. That is certainly where most of the channel's attention is going to be going for the next couple of months. There's some good rainfall now on the forecast of the parts of far north Queensland and also into the Northern Territory as well, where some storms and showers are now possible across the top end of Western Australia and into the Northern Territory. Take a look at this. The Northern rainfall onset is just a few days away from breaking across parts of far north Queensland. Let's break this down day by day. You can see rainfall not expected to occur throughout Monday. There will be some showers expected throughout Tuesday, especially Tuesday afternoon. We're going to see showers to develop across the far north of Queensland. Wednesday, those showers will continue. In fact, we could be seeing up to 50 millimetres fall for some parts of the Casbury Coast outside of Innisfail and Babinda. Some good rainfall possible there. Showers will continue through Thursday. In fact, another 50 millimetres possible there. Friday, the showers will temporarily ease off. There will be some heavier falls expected up into the Daintree area. Some showers still expected across Saturday where some good falls are also possible in between sort of that 15 to 50 millimetre mark. Showers continuing through Sunday as well before they do slowly ease off on Monday before I return to some more showery conditions, especially up into the Daintree on Tuesday and Wednesday next week. In all, this is going to amount to rainfall accumulations above 120 millimetres now on the forecast here for parts of far north Queensland, into the Daintree peak accumulations up to 120 millimetres, and into the Cowsbury Coast peak accumulations again up to 120 millimetres, with widespread falls expected to be above 100 millimetres there. Innisfail expecting between 40 and 80 millimetres, Tully between 50 and 80 millimetres as well. Cairns expecting anywhere between 20 and 30 millimetres of rainfall over the next 10 days. However, inland towards Mount Carbine, the rainfall will be negligible, not expecting too much out there. I've said it in a lot of videos, 100 millimetres in far north Queensland, especially over 10 days, it's not enough to flood a drain pipe, but this is the start of the wet season up there. By definition, the first 50 millimetres to fall after September 1st, that's when we classify the start of the northern rainfall onset. If you want to get really technical, the wet season is going to break over the north of Queensland in the next week or so. However, I've read a lot of comments. The first 
those real rainfalls don't start to come until about November, December, typically around Xmas week, Christmas week. That's when the rainfall really does start to pipe up across parts of far north Queensland. Also, says a commenter from up there, uh, the heavy falls are still a few months away. Good rainfall into the far north and the top end of Queensland as well. The Northern Territory as well, first decent rainfall or first re um, recordable rainfall actually on the forecast now over the next 10 days. The bulk of it will be happening in the five to 10 day forecast period. You can see it here. The falls will be happening sort of next week or so. I'm going to see if I can really hammer down and um, kind of bring out the uh, rainfall accumulations here. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week, yeah, you can see between sort of 2 and 10 millimetres is possible up in the far north of the Northern Territory and into the northern parts of Western Australia as well. We did talk about this earlier on the video with some thunderstorms possible next Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, it was Monday and Tuesday. Looks like the pulse thunderstorm events are going to start piping up Tuesday and Wednesday, the 10th and 11th of September, respectively up there. About a month and a half early. Typically, the thunderstorms don't start firing up into far north Western Australia, into the Kimberley region until probably late October, early November, but it looks like they're going to start coming early this year with a, a couple of days worth of thunderstorms expected Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Now these thunderstorms are going to be very hit and miss, especially in terms of rainfall, but in terms of their duration as well, they're going to be very hit and miss. Some days they will fire up across parts of the top end of Western Australia, and then you might go two weeks without seeing a single cloud in the sky. So the rainfall is not in any way, shape or form about to break up into the northern parts of Western Australia, still many months away from that happening. But it is good to see that we are starting to see some thunderstorms and some signs and rumbles of activity up into the northern parts of Western Australia because it is this time of the year when we start to see stuff like that expected. The monsoon trough as well, and I would just like to add this into the later part of the video before we do finish things off here this morning. You can see the monsoon trough and some rainfall is now really starting to creep down into the southern islands of Indonesia and some rainfall is well expected across Papua New Guinea and down into the parts of the Coral Sea that we do start to see this rainfall this time of the year. But it is certainly a sign that the wet season is only a month or two away in terms of proper rainfall up in Queensland, the Northern Territory in Western Australia. And the time will fly like that. Before you know it, you'll be inundated with this rainfall and you'll be waiting for the dry season to be set in once again. But yeah, that is all for me today. If you haven't already, please do check out the big wet season forecast that I made yesterday. It's done really well, actually. Uh, and I put a lot of time and effort into researching every possible factor in terms of wet season activity into that video. And I believe it is going to be really helpful for those in New South Wales, Queensland, the Northern Territory and Western Australia. So if you haven't already, please do consider checking it out. It's a long watch, but if you do want to just skip around to what interests you the most, whether that be rainfall or cyclones, you sure can. There's timestamps in the description as with every single video and as with this video, as well. Uh, but yeah, it is a really good watch and I do highly recommend watching it because it is based off the latest information and it is a very accurate video and I do believe that a lot of the information in there is going to come to fruition. That is all for me today and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.